أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلما دخلوا على يوسف آوى إليه أبويه وقال وقال دخلوا مصر إن شاء الله آمنين ورفع أبويه على العرش وخروا له سجدا وقال يا أبت هذا تأويل رؤياي من قبل قد جعلها ربي حقا وقد أحسن بي إذ أخرجني من السجن وجاء بكم من البدو من بعد أن نزغ الشيطان بيني من بعد أن نزغ الشيطان بيني وبين إخوتي إن ربي لطيف لما يشاء إنه هو العليم الحكيم صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Carrying on with the tafsir of Surah Yusuf, the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they have sought forgiveness from their father Ya'qub alayhi salam, and Ya'qub alayhi salam being the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he immediately forgave them. So he didn't hold any grudge and Ya'qub alayhi salam, he forgave his sons. So now the instruction from Yusuf alayhi salam was to come back uh, it was to bring Ya'qub alayhi salam and whoever was uh, with Ya'qub alayhi salam, the whole family, to Misr, to Egypt. So they set out for Egypt. So now Yusuf alayhi salam, he, uh, w- what did he do in preparation for his father uh, coming to Egypt? Some uh, of the commentators, they say that Yusuf alayhi salam, he gathered a large group on the outskirts of Misr in, the e- in Egypt. And he gathered thousands of people, the notable people of Egypt, uh, the horsemen. And he gathered. He made. He he gathered all uh, so many thousands of people. Some of them were people on horses. He gathered them. He made them uh, be in a orderly manner. He gathered them in rows, and it was an amazing scene. So when Yaqub alayhi salam he approached, he was uh, astonished by this amazing scene, and then. Jibreel alayhi salam said to Yaqub alayhi salam that look towards the sky because indeed the angels are happy uh, with uh, with this scene today because they were grieved when you were grieved as well. So then Yaqub alayhi salam he looked towards the thousands uh, or many of the horsemen as well, people on the horses and uh, he said which one of them is my son Yusuf and Jibreel then said to him that that one over there which has some sort of uh, Canopy over his head, some sort of shelter. That is your uh, son Yusuf alayhi salam. So then uh, Yaqub alayhi salam came down and Yusuf, Yusuf alayhi salam descended from his horse as well. And then they both uh, embraced each other. And this was a very happy moment. And uh, the commentators, commentators, they say that the angels of the sky, they uh, they obviously cried. Uh, obviously Yaqub alayhi salam and Yusuf alayhi salam, they cried in happiness. And the angels of the sky, they also cried as well. And it was a very emotional scene. So this is what Allah Ta'ala then says, فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَبَوَيْهِ So when they all entered upon Yusuf alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam, he placed his parents near himself. So أَبَوَيْهِ means uh, his parents. So here it's not actually his mother and his father, rather it's Yaqub alayhi salam, his father and his auntie. Because the reason is that uh, the mother of Yusuf alayhi salam, she had passed away when Binyamin was born. So then Yusuf alayhi salam, after that he said, وَقَالَ دَخُلُوا مِصْغَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ And then he said to them, that enter Egypt, if uh, Allah ta'ala willing, in peace. So then the whole people, they entered Egypt and they uh, and Yusuf alayhi salam was sat upon uh, his throne. So then when his father and when his auntie came, entered Egypt, what did he do? He raised both of his parents, meaning his father and his auntie, upon the throne. So he made them sit on the throne with him. 
an wa wa after that wa khaddu lahu sujada an they fell uh, down uh, they fell uh, they fell down uh, for him in sajda so they didn't actually fall down in prostration upon the forehead but uh, the commentators they say it was uh, a bowing a bowing uh, which was their customary kind of greeting that is what they did uh, to yusuf alayhi salam so in our sharia even this bowing is not permissible but it was uh, permissible at that time so it was a, a prostration full prostration like a person on his forehead on on the ground it wasn't like that it was just it was just bowing with the um, just with the body so then then yusuf alayhi salam then he says وَقَالَ يَا أَبَتِ هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ رُؤْيَايَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Then he said, Oh my father, this is the interpretation of the dream from before. When, the, uh, when Yusuf a.s. saw the dream, uh, when he was, uh, which was mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the start of the uh, surah, this is the interpretation of that dream. قَدَ جَعَلَهَا رَبِّي حَقَّ Allah ta'ala has made it uh, become true. And then Yusuf a.s. mentions the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. He says, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجَنِي And indeed, Allah, indeed my Rabb has shown favor to me when he took me out of the, uh, when he took me out of the prison. So now Yusuf a.s. is mentioning the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's saying that, Allah Ta'ala showed kindness to him. He showed, uh, he favored him by taking him out of the prison. So here, there is one thing for us to uh, reflect upon. And that is that, why did Yusuf Alayhi Salam not mention uh, him coming out of the well? Because that was also a favor of Allah Ta'ala that he took him out of the darkness of the well and he didn't uh, let Yusuf Alayhi Salam perish in the well. He took him out. So that was a favor of Allah Ta'ala as well. So why didn't he mention um, uh, the incident where uh, he came out of the well. Why didn't he say Allah Ta'ala was kind to me and he took me out of the well? He didn't say this because he didn't want to um, uh, upset his elder brothers. So one, because Yusuf Alayhi had now forgiven his brothers and now he didn't want anything of that to uh, come back. He didn't want to uh, um, you know, hurt. He didn't want to disrespect his elder brothers by bringing that incident up again. So that is the reason why he, meant, uh, why he didn't mention uh, about the well, but just about the prison. So this is a lesson for us as well that when we for, when we uh, when uh, we forgive anyone, then we should also forget whatever uh, they did wrong to us as well. So we should forgive and forget. And he and meaning Allah Taala has brought you from the from the desert. After the shaytan had incited. Uh, between uh, myself, mean, uh, Yusuf Alayhi Salam is referring to himself, and between my brothers. So it's, it's Allah Ta'ala's favor that he brought us all back together when after, uh, after Shaytan had tried to separate us. Inna Rabbi latifu lima yasha. Indeed, my Rabb is subtle in whatever he uh, wills. So Shaytan uh, tried to uh, make the, bro- obviously the brothers, they were influenced by uh, the jealousy that they had. They, um, um, obviously, Yusuf a.s. was separated from the brothers and was separated from uh, Yaqub a.s. his father. But Allah Ta'ala had a plan and he, uh, and what was his plan? To re, uh, to bring back everyone together, to unite everyone together. That was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made what he wanted uh, uh, to, to occur. So after uh, Yusuf a.s. went to Egypt, so many things happened. Um, he went into prison, the youngsters came and um, he interpreted the, uh, the dream for them and in this way eventually he came out of prison because the king heard that Yusuf uh, um, was an interpreter of the dreams and you know, everything, all of these events that we covered in Surah Yusuf, this was all the planning of Allah Ta'ala um, to get uh, to, to unite Yusuf alayhi salam back with uh, Yaqub alayhi salam. This was all of the planning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so many times we see many things, but obviously um, we don't know uh, uh, that how this is um, all the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we see many things and sometimes we don't understand why this is happening or why that is happening, but it's all happening with the command of Allah ta'ala because Allah ta'ala has a plan. 
إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, he is the most knowledgeable with regards to his creation and Al-Hakim, the most wise with whatever he does. So everything that happens is, will, is with the will of Allah Ta'ala and is happening according to the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, just going back, when Yusuf alayhi salam, he raised his, both of his parents up to, uh, when he made his father and his auntie sit on the throne, this is a lesson for us as well, that we should respect our parents and keep them happy as well. So, despite Yusuf alayhi salam, despite his high position, he uh, respected his parents and he didn't just disregard them. So, this is a lesson for us that if we are also given a high status, we should not disregard our parents. Rather, we should keep utmost respect for them. And then uh, the part where they both fell down in prostration, uh, when they all fell down in prostration for Yusuf alayhi salam. So, this was the prostration of respect of uh, the greeting, not the uh, prostration with the forehead and of worship. This wasn't that kind of prostration. So here there is two types of sajda. So there's ibadatun, a prostration for worship. So this is solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody else. It was not allowed in any previous nation, nor is it allowed in this nation. Now the sajda for respect, this was allowed in previous nations. However, it is forbidden in our sharia. So just a few lessons that we've learned today is that Allah, first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He does is uh, according to His wisdom. Everything that is happening around us is happening with the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may not understand why uh, certain things are happening in this manner, but it's all uh, the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other thing as we uh, just covered was that Yusuf alayhi salam, he didn't mention the incident of the well. So the thing is that when we forgive anyone, we should also forget whatever harm they did to us and we should uh, move on. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to act upon uh, his words. So, hope we are benefiting from the words of Almighty Allah. Just a little while ago, I was <coughs> reading somewhere that just from this Surah Yusuf, which is not even one para, which is about three quarters of a para, three quarters, just, there are 101 lessons to be learned. Just now we have learned so many lessons. This is called Tadabbur of Quran. Whenever we read Quran, we shouldn't just read that I need to finish this para or I need to finish so many khatam. Whenever we read an ayah or a page or something of the Quran, we should think that what is Allah saying to me in this ayah? Afala yatadabbaghun al-Quran? Do they not ponder over the Quran? Or is the Quran, Allah says, there's either two things. Afala yatadabbaghun al-Quran? Either they don't ponder over the Quran? or their hearts are locked. If their hearts are open, then they should be pondering over the words of Allah. And in order to ponder over the words of Allah, we need to understand what Allah is saying. We need to know a bit of Arabic. Yeah, the tafsir behind the ayah, when was this ayah revealed? On what occasion? Is this ayah mansukh, nasikh? Is this abrogated? Which ayah was revealed first? What masail to be taken out? That is for the ulama, that is for the mufassirin. But what is Allah really, how does this ayah relate to my, me today? Inna Rabbi latiful lima yasha. Allah is very settled in his, de- whatever he wishes. What have Allah been wishing for me? How have things worked out for me in my life? What were things happening in my life 10 years ago, 20 years ago, which I couldn't understand at that time, but how has everything worked out so well now? That time I couldn't understand. 
when we understand, when we read the Quran with tadabbur, we will enjoy, we will, we will find so connected the Quran, subhanallah, the Quran is so, you know, relating to my daily life so much. Allah gives us understanding, you know, sometimes we are looking for answers in our life, but because we don't open the Quran, where Allah has kept all the answers to our problems, we don't understand. We can't feel, seem to find the answers. We get depressed because we look at, you know, creation. We look at the words of the creation. We look at the messages, the media of the creation. We will get depressed. We get frustrated. We get confused. But when we look at the message of, of the Creator, when we look at the messages of Almighty Allah mentioning t- to us, then we get more and more impressed. We can never be depressed. We get so excited. Subhanallah, Allah is saying this to me. Allah is cursed upon the zalim. Am I a zalim in any way? To anyone? In any situation? Relating. How is this fitting my life? That is tadabbur, very important, which we are losing in this day and age. We just seem to be just reading the Quran, reading the Quran, reading the Quran, and then thinking that, Alhamdulillah, I am very pious, very content. Alhamdulillah, I have done so much khatam this Ramadan. I have done so many khatam this year. I am so much, mashallah, you know, how much khatam have we done? How much? Allah doesn't tell you just to read the Quran, but to read the Quran with, you know, making it relative to yourself, relating to yourself. That is very, very important. So let us get a bit of understanding. We have about six, seven weeks left for Ramadan. Create a little bit of understanding of the Quran in our life. You know, um, uh, get in touch with some of the ulama. Start reading some of the translation of the Quran, which, you know, has been mentioned authentic by our ulama, uh, read them, and then understand some of the words of Allah. So when we standing in Taraweeh as well, we are not just looking at the time. We are not just saying that, oh, the Imam is taking so long, why is it? We are actually relating what Allah, you know, just sometimes one verse in Taraweeh, one verse in Taraweeh, subhanAllah, and you just think it about that verse, and you can't imagine that, subhanAllah, 20 rakat Taraweeh already finished. I wanted it to carry on for more and more. يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ You know, one day I remember once uh, in the 14th para, that Arabi was going on, Allah said, such a powerful ayah, just that one ayah clicked in my mind. يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ They, they recognize that it's the blessing of Allah. ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا Then they re- deny it, then they reject it. وَأَكْثَرُهُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Most of them are rejected, most of them are ungrateful people. How many blessings do we know that Allah has given us? Yet we de- deny Allah, yet we reject Allah, yet we are not ungrateful. We are not grateful to Allah. How does this ayah relate to my daily day? How many blessings of Allah? I know it is a blessing of Allah, yet I am ungrateful for it in my life today. So just one ayah, the Prophet ﷺ, one one ayah, the whole night is to be crying in front of Allah. One one ayah, because they used to relate to the Quran. They, the heart were connected to the Quran today. On one side we are reading the Quran as well. On one side the mobile is also there. Here and there the, the phone beeps a little bit. It moves a little bit. Then immediately we are on the phone again. Who has WhatsApp me? What's on the social media? What's going on? Are we connected? Are we really reading the Quran? Or? Like Iqbal said, Kahi tujhe apna sajda kafin na bana de. May your sajda not make you a non-Muslim. Sir jukata hai kisi ke samne. Zahin mein koi aur hai. You know you are putting your head in front of Allah but in your mind is something else besides Allah. Today we are reading the kalam of Allah but our mind is totally away from Allah. So in order to bring this in our life we need to really relate to the Quran. Really get connected to the Quran. Tadabur is very very important. That what message is Allah giving me through this ayah. This one page I have recited today. This one para I have recited today. What lessons have I learned from there? What questions do I need to take for the rest of the day? In the morning I am reading Yasin. Which verse of Yasin has really collected to me? And then think about it the whole day. That this is what Allah is saying to me in Yasin. Am I going to, is my life according to this? This is what I have read today in Surah Al-Mulk. Is my life going according to this? Is my daily routine according to this? Allah give us understanding. So it's very, very important that, uh, you know, we have the time at the moment. Alhamdulillah, we have a few weeks. And uh, let us really get connected with the words of Allah. 
and really enjoy, we will enjoy the Qur'an, subhanAllah. We won't get enough of it. You know, where we hear people just, you know, how was the Sahaba's relationship with the Qur'an? It's how is our relationship today with our phones. We can't let go of the phone. Even in Salah, you know, people are going up and down. When will Salah finish? I can get back on my phone. That is people, how people are so connected to their phone. As soon as Salam finished, the Imam doesn't even finish the second Salam and they're already on the phones. As if, you know, some messages of Allah is already there that your Salah is accepted. I've received it. Delivered. Salah delivered already. Two ticks. That is our situation. How connected? How, do we feel the same over the Quran? Do we feel the same over the Quran? Allah give us understanding. You know, Allah give us that uh, love for Quran. That Quran will never fail to, you know, uh, keep us amazed. But we need to understand the Quran. We need to really. Surah Al-Baqarah, our Ustad, you know, he used to, when we used to be doing the translation of the Quran, our Ustad used to say, Surah Al-Baqarah, one of the biggest surah, the biggest surah in the Quran, the longest surah in the Quran. Forty ruku', it's got forty masail. He's got 40 this, he's got 40. he gave us a whole list of things. He said, these are the things I've worked out from Surah Al-Baqarah. This is one surah. These are the f- messages that Allah is saying to us in this surah. Let us work out in the same way. And then inshallah, uh, we will feel so loved. If you really want to see how much Allah loves me, how much do I love the book of Allah? That is the thermometer. That is the thermometer. The more I am connected to the Quran, the more it means I am connected to Allah. The less I am connected to the Qur'an, the less, less I am connected to Allah. So this is just one example. We are doing Surah Yusuf. And we already know the, surah of, uh, the story of Surah Yusuf. 101 lessons to be learned from Surah Yusuf. And that is just, you know, one uh, Mawlana, one Sheikh's article I read. Otherwise, there must have been more lessons. The more lessons you can learn from the Qur'an, the greater it is. And we need to really uh, um, uh, uh, take this to heart. Allah first of all give me the ability to do tadabbur on the Qur'an, to really understand the Qur'an, to read the Qur'an with understanding and to relate to it and to bring it, make it part of our life uh, because that is the way forward. Not just reading it for blessings, not just reading it for barakat, not just reading it for, you know, when... You know, so today unfortunately just the other day somebody sent a message that one taxi driver was reading the Qur'an, so one of the customers came in and he said, Why are you reading the Qur'an? Has somebody passed away? Has somebody passed away? Why do you need to read the Qur'an? That is some people's mentality, that you only read Qur'an when somebody has died. Our hearts are dying day by day. The situation of the Ummah is getting deteriorating day by day. Qur'an is the thing that will keep us alive. Allah give all of us understanding, inshallah.